Welcome, everyone. This is David Morgan of morganreport.com, and we are doing a MIF, Metals Investors Forum, backstage event with Coast Copper. Adam Travis uh, is going to speak about the project. Uh, Adam, if there's one thing that you maybe want to emphasize that we didn't really talk about on our initial contact at the MIF, what would, what would that be? Yeah, well, thanks, uh, David, and thanks again to Metal Investor Show. And yeah, this is a great opportunity to look back and, uh, you know, 10 minutes uh, for anyone who's been on stage and uh, trying to cover everything is uh, quite a short period of time. So thanks for this second opportunity here. Um, I'm a geologist by background, and if anything that I regret perhaps is uh, would have went into a bit more geology during that presentation. And we've really learned quite a bit more about the, uh, what's controlling the mineralization there at the Empire project. Uh, it was previously mined for magnetite, which they didn't even think about the copper and gold potential. And also further down the mountain, it was mined underground for massive sulfides and copper. And what we've been learning with the drilling with intercepts like 16 meters of seven grams gold and 3% copper is that when you break that down, there's some very high intervals with just gold in them in the order of four to five meters of 16 grams gold not visually um, significant uh, and so these things wouldn't have been recognized by the old timers and so we start getting excited about that keep in mind the last mining was in the 70s when gold really wasn't significant and so i think that's a game changer for the project that you know there is some very untested or underappreciated gold targets here Right. <clears throat> Can you go into that a little bit more as far as what that would do to the bottom line? I know, you know, the project is not developed and not in production, but, you know, when you've got a component of gold uh, with, you know, $2,000 an ounce gold, rough numbers, USD, you know, that could be significant. So are we looking at, you know, a three gram situation, a five gram, and what kind of intercepts have you seen with uh, the progress you've made so far? Yeah, so the, 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 uh, where we started was around the existing magnetite iron ore pit, where previous workers in the 80s and, and the early 2000s had identified approximately about a million tons at two grams gold, 0.3 copper, basically sitting at the edge of the old magnetite iron ore pit. We certainly did some drilling there. It's still open at depth. We had a few complications with regards to old underground workings, and we're going to send some surveyors and some miners in there to try and understand that a little bit better. But in the meantime, we've stepped a few hundred meters away from that, where we had some indications that there was mineralization in copper that was, you know, mentioned in old reports. And surprisingly to us, it also contains significant gold, and that's where we made those new discoveries. And some of those actually are on trend of areas where there's some old underground workings where we project those trends back and we see that there wasn't even any sampling there because probably they didn't recognize either A, the magnetite that they were mining and searching for, or B, massive parts of uh, copper zones, which they recognized, although it wasn't their focus. So yeah, it, you know, th this is a very target rich environment. One of my things in my 35 years in the business that you realize when you're on a very prospective property is you get all these pleasant surprises and different styles of mineralization, sometimes not even the one you hope for, right? I mean, uh, you're just happening to be in the right part of the planet and in a very prospective areas. And so we'll take this uh, unexpected bonus gold zones, you know? Exactly. So nothing's, <clears throat> the last time it was mine was in 1972, right? Yeah, two areas. There was an open pit in the late 60s uh, for iron ore, 3 million tons of magnetite. And uh, then further down the mountain, uh, Kaminko, who is uh, the pre precursor of uh, Tech, a big mining uh, group here in Vancouver in Canada, um, they were mining underground for copper uh, principally. Uh, Tech has always been a base metal miner, and certainly back in the 70s they, they were. But the head grades in the late, uh, or sorry, in the early 1970s were in the order of 2% copper and around two grams per ton of gold. In massive sulfide zones uh, with calcopyrite and pyrotite and all these very heavy, shiny rocks, if you will, for those non-geologist people, 
in zones up to 31 meters thick. So that tells me, and, and basically was mined over four kilometers of strike length. So these these are these are big targets. Uh, quite often, people think of Scarns as small erratic targets, but these tell me that this has uh, got quite a bit of size potential. Very good. We also have discussed um, what the availability is. In other words, you're in a situation where you have a year-round access, correct? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, we're actually back drilling right now. Here we are in uh, you know, early March, and, and the guys are drilling. There's only uh, uh, less than a foot of snow at site. We're sending samples to the laboratory. We've got drillers and geologists and contractors, and especially laboratories that are saying, great, send us samples now before everybody else does in the summer. And, you know, that keeps your costs down, right? Uh, no helicopters, no seasonality. We can basically turn the project on and off when, whenever we want here almost. So what's your overview on the copper situation? I mean, I've interviewed a lot of copper companies. We featured several in the Morgan Report. We're pretty bullish. I mean, the EV push is here for real. And, you know, people tell me it's got better dynamics than silver. So what say you, Adam? Yeah, I mean, I guess I'd be remiss without, you know, making a comment about, you know, how my, my heart pours out to, to uh, Ukraine and the people there with, you know, what's going on. And certainly that hasn't improved since our show here a few weeks ago. Um, I think hopefully... You know, I, I, I'm a British Columbian. I'm proud. I spent much of my careers uh, here looking and trying to advance projects in my region and my home country. And I think one of the things that I hopefully people will start to get across from is the need for all of us to be sourcing uh, minerals, energy, things of that nature, uh, and be strong and independent uh, on our own, right? Uh, and so that's um, really what we've identified with copper here in British Columbia. It's Canada's largest producer of copper. We being a junior mining company, it's a little bit harder to explore for these big, huge porphyry copper deposits. But there are a number of these very uh, high-grade copper occurrences that in many instances have been overlooked by the big majors. But yet... These things, you know, especially past producing ones like Empire are, you know, well suited to infrastructure, have seen previous mining, have been previously disturbed. We're not mining or talking about mining in pristine wilderness areas with a bunch of logging. And so I think, you know, I mean, one thing we also didn't touch on when you mentioned batteries is uh, there are some interesting cobalt numbers that are associated with this and silver numbers. And, you know, we're not really talking about that too much, but I think you know, the more that we can uh, build uh, resources and things, provide good jobs for people uh, and local communities uh, and build up, um, you know, things for, for the people here and, and, and source them locally. I, you know, I think more and more that's hitting home these days with what's going on with Russia and Ukraine, right? Exactly. Well, I think I'd like to wrap it up about here. How do people find out more? about Coast Copper, what you're doing. Do you have a newsletter service that you put out or press release service that people can get? Yeah, so I mean, I guess the best place to go would be to uh, coastcoppercorp.com, our website. And uh, we uh, certainly uh, work with the Metal Investor Show and uh, Mars Investing and uh, try and get the story out there. And as this, you know, it's a, it's a pretty new story, really this uh, Coast Copper really got rebanded about six months ago, but we certainly want to start to get out more and more and really appreciate uh, the interview with you today. And uh, we'll certainly uh, hope people will uh, hear more about us. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good story in a, in, in a very good uh, region of uh, British Columbia here. Very good, Adam. Well, thank you for your time. 